This is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Shalom Uvracha and welcome to our amazing learning. I wanted to continue in reading for, for you from the same chapter, the fourth chapter about the wisdom that Rabbi Eliezer ben Orkanos revealed and there are, there are like many details and there's much information that is written here on the throne of honor and seven clouds of honor that are surrounding him and the way that the will is surrounding and protecting and moving that holy chariot from one place to the next and the faces of the holy animals those are the four holy angels that we spoke about in, in the last um, session but I want our learning to be useful and I want it to bring us somewhere so I um, I chose to to skip to the 10th chapter and the 10th chapter is the second part that is continuing the 9th chapter. In the 9th chapter Rabbi Eliezer is explaining on the creation of the water that in the 5th day the Creator created all the animals that came out of the water so the fifth day is a day of creation that in every other fifth day of the creation there is going to be something strong that is well connected to the nature of that day. Like if in the first day the Creator created heaven and earth, so there is going to be something connected to that creation every first day of the week. And in the fifth day of the week the Creator brought out to the world all the animals that came out of the water all the birds and all the fish and all the animals that are in the sea so in the 10th chapter Rabbi Eliezer ben Orkanus is telling the story of Yonah Jonah that it was Thursday it was the fifth day that in the fifth day, not of creation, it was the fifth day of the week, thousands of years later, when Jonah ran away from God. And why did he run? Because in the first time that the Creator sent him to the border of Israel and to be a prophet and to teach Am Israel, the nation of Israel, to rebuke them and to guide them not to sin, so they listened to him. But in the second time that the Creator sent him, he sent him to Jerusalem and to warn the, the, the people that lived in Jerusalem that um, the nation of Israel, that if they won't fix their actions, so the Creator will destroy Jerusalem. And in that time they did tshuva, they fixed their actions. So. After they fixed their actions, so Jerusalem, Yerushalayim, has not been destroyed. So the people that lived over there in that generation, they thought that he was a, a false prophet and that he lied. And they told him, here you see, you told us that Hashem will destroy Jerusalem and he haven't. So he was frustrated for, for that and even though that he wanted uh, Jerusalem to be established and he wanted no one to die and not to be punished still he cared about his honor and his respect in a way that he didn't want it to be considered as a, as a false prophet so in the third time when the Creator sent him to Nineveh so then Jonah thought to himself and he said I know that those people are very close to do tshuva they will also fix themselves and if now I'm gonna go and tell them that they that their city is about to be destroyed 
So not only that the nation of Israel will think that I'm a liar, that I'm a false prophet, also those people in Nineveh, like different nations, they will also say that I'm a false prophet. So he thought to himself, where am I going to run? How can I run from Hashem? He wanted to run away from his mission. That's a life story of all of us that are too scared to deal with reality and afraid to take responsibility on our lives and choosing to run away. One is running away to his office, one is running away to, 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 the, to, to learn, one is running away from relationships, one is running away from being a father. Everyone is running from something. So Yonah, he thought to himself, where am I going to run to? Where am I going to hide? I'm going to hide to a place that the honor of heaven has not been said on that place. means that there is less supervision of the Creator on that place. I cannot run to the sky because it been said that the honor of heaven is on the sky. Like the verse is saying, Ala shamayim kevodo, that the honor of heaven is on the sky. And I cannot run to the land, because on the land it's also have been said that the wide land, the wide world is filled with his honor. So I'm going to run to a place that there is no honor of heaven over there. So he ran to the sea, because on the sea, on the water, it doesn't read, and there is no verse that is describing the sea as a place for honor of heaven. So he ran to the city named Yafo, and he couldn't find a ship to go into the sea. And the sea and the ship that he finally found was far away from Yafo. Um, Yafo is one of the cities in the Holy Land of Israel, of course, was two days' walk. So he tried. So after that, um, Jonah started to walk toward that ship. Suddenly there was a huge wind that brought the ship back to Yafo, to the city of Yafo. And the Creator did that test to show Yonah that Hashem doesn't want him to go into that ship. Like he saw the ship over there, he started walking there to that direction. When he got there, he heard that the ship went back to Yafo. So it was a test for him. But he didn't catch the test, he didn't want to listen. So he walked back for another couple of days and then he found the ship. So what the Creator did, he brought a storm, a storm, a very strong wind on the sea. And then Yonah jumped into the, like, so Yonah went into the, into the boat and now he is sailing and he's happy and he said, I know that everything will be perfect. Like he's telling stories to himself. And there was a huge storm over there. He asked the people, where are we heading? They told him we're going to the islands, Tarshisha, probably to the islands, the area of, of Greece, uh, to Greek. Um, so he told them, okay, I'll come with you. And usually all the people in those days were paying the money when they would go off the boat, not when they're going up on the boat, on the ship, only when they're going to the shore in the, in the last station, then they're paying. But Yonah was so happy, so he paid already. He wanted for sure to have a place. So he tried to run to that area called Tarshish from Hashem. So he went to Yafo, and after one day of sailing, there was a huge storm in the sea. From the right and from the left. But when they were looking on other ships in the sea, they saw that everyone are sailing calmly and quietly. They didn't have no waves. But only the ship that Yonah was in was in huge, great trouble. And it's written, His boat was about to break. Only his boat, not other boats in the sea. It was not a stormy day. It was Yonah's boat in trouble. Rabbi Hananya, one of the righteous people, said that from 70 languages, people were on that boat. It means one from every nation. 
and every one of them was holding his belief, holding his like idol that he was worshipping in his hand. And everyone were praying to their gods, to their idols, and we said, and they said to themselves, "Okay, let's everyone call to our God, and He will answer and will save us from our troubles." And everyone were calling, and no one answered. There was no reception, probably. And Yonah, in his trouble, he felt like, "Okay, there, there are issues," and he realized what's going on. So. He knew that it's because of him, so he decided to go to the bottom of the boat and to go to sleep. So the captain came to him and told him, Hey, man, what are you doing? We're all like between death and life here, and you're asleep. Which nation you are from? So he said, I'm a Hebrew. So he told him, But we heard that the Hebrew's God is great. Stand up, call your God. Maybe He will help us. Maybe He will save us and make wonders like He did to you on the Red Sea. So Yonah was honest and told him, "Listen, I'm not going to hide it from you. All this trouble that you're suffering from is because of me. Take me and throw me to the sea, and the sea will be quiet." Rabbi Shimon, one of the righteous people, said that. The sailors on the sea, on the boat, they were afraid to throw Yonah to the to the to the water. So they start like making lotteries to see who will be, on who the destiny will fall, that he will be the one to throw. That they try to search who from the seventy people on on board was the one that because of him they have that trouble. And when they checked, it fell on Yonah. They realized that it was Yonah. So they were still afraid because they heard that he was a Hebrew, and they were afraid of his God to punish them for throwing him into the sea. So they started to throw all the things, all the tools, all the the weapons that they had, every vessel that they had in the ship. They threw it away to the sea because they wanted to the boat to be lighter. But it didn't help at all, and they tried to go back to the to the land, and they couldn't. So what they did in the end, finally, they took Yona, and they were standing on the end of the boat, like on close to the close to the sea, as close as possible, and they all said together, Elohe Olam Hashem, the God of the world, Hashem. Don't let us kill a clean person. We don't know who that person is. But Yona, so like they're asking from Hashem, from the Creator, don't let us kill him for no reason. We don't know who he is. But Yona told them, it's for me. That trouble is because of me. Take me and throw me to the sea. So they were holding him. They didn't have a choice, and they. Took him closer and closer to the water, till his knees were in the water, and the sea stopped from his anger. No more waves. So they brought him back on board, and the sea starts storming again. And then they put him to his thighs, to his hips, and nothing. And and the sea stopped. There was no more storm anymore. So they brought him back to the boat, the, to their ship. They didn't wanted him to die, and again the sea, the waves start hitting the boat again. Again they put him into the water till water covered his neck, and the waves went quiet. And they didn't know what to do. They put him back on the on the boat. And the storm was very strong, like was about to break the the boat. They didn't have a choice, and they threw him into the water completely. In the moment that he fell into the water, the sea went quiet, and enough no harm is done to no one else on the boat. Rabbi Tafon, one of the righteous people, said that there was a certain unique, special fish that was. The fish that was in um, appointed, like he had that responsibility, the job to swallow Yonah, 
from the six days of creation and why they're telling us this story. Like we said, because in the fifth day, that was in the fifth day, it took place in the fifth day, all the story of Yonah. So, in the fifth day, the Creator brought out to the world the fish and the large fish that He created, been created in that day. So, Yonah went into the mouth of that fish. And there are many more explanations here on what Yonah experienced while he was um, while he was inside the stomach of the fish but we're gonna skip it as for now and in a certain moment the, sto the fish said to Yonah I want to tell you that the place that you are at right now in the middle of the sea is a very special and unique place and if you will pray right now your prayer will be answered so Yonah said to the fish, thank you, please stand in that place because I want to pray. So the fish stopped and Yonah started praying in front of the Creator and told him, Ribbono shel olam, the master of the universe, you are the one that brings up people and bring them down. You took me down, so please help me to go back up. You're the one that kills and gives life. You see me that I'm close to death. Please revive me. But he had not been saved until he said that thing. Asher nadarti ashalema. I want to pay my vow. What that I said that I will do for you, I want to do. So the Creator told the fish to throw Yonah, to puke Yonah to the dry land. And the people that were on the boat, they saw all those wonders that the Creator made with Yonah. After three days, when, when he been thrown back to the sea, so all the sailors, they were standing over there. He been puked back to the, to the shore, I'm sorry. So the sailors, they saw him, that he survived in the stomach of the fish for three days. Immediately, they all threw away their idols that they were holding in their hands. And they all went to Jerusalem and circumcised themselves. And they have been converted. They converted. And they had a great fear from heaven and complete faith. And they sacrificed a sacrifice for Hashem, for the Creator. So Yonah went and paid his debt to society and went to um, Nineveh and told the people of Nineveh that they must do tshuva and that they should come back to their God. And they did. And in the end, the Creator rebuked Yonah on all of this life story and told him that he should care more about the life of people and life of animals that he was caring too much about himself not to be humiliated that his name won't be disgraced but he didn't consider how much the creator cared about the people that he wanted to send you not to go and rebuke them it means to open their eyes to come back to the truth and to fix their ways for the Creator not to punish them and not to bring down judgments on them. I'm waking up um, from this story to remind myself again what my life purpose is all about, to go and give a hand to as many people as possible. And you should do the same, to rethink about your lives and to see how you can benefit others, how you can help, how you can fulfill your destiny and to accomplish the Creator's expectations and faith in you for you to achieve great things and to make wonders on earth. Amen. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. 
please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.